Look, I'm going to be honest, I love Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I consider it to be one of the best Marvel slash Spider-Man movies in general, but I'm extremely confused and disappointed by the Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse movie. As a sequel and as a movie that is only part one of two, for me it's worse than Far From Home and No Way Home. The worst part of the movie has to definitely be the canon events, because they rob agency of the characters. The only way this movie can actually make sense is if these canon events are lies made up by Miguel O'Hara. But if they are not, they truly ruin the movie. The canon events are a terrible narrative device because they force characters into terrible positions that logically they wouldn't be in. To explain the problem in simpler terms, predestined events are a terrible gimmick that ruin the movie and also compromise the morality of amazing amount of characters. Another problem with the canon event, as a concept, is that the information that we have about it is inconsistent. Miguel O'Hara went to a different universe and somehow destroyed it by simply being there. On the other hand, thousands of Spider-Man being in his own universe doesn't cause it to explode. Also, we've seen the opposite in the other movie. The more time you spend in another universe, the more likely you are to glitch out. Another problem with the canon event is that the canon event can actually be prevented, as it's shown in the movie. But if it is, the spider people have to contain the breach. It's not explained how they're gonna do that, and it's not explained how it fails sometimes. But hey, I'm not gonna talk entirely about the canon event in this video. Let's talk about some of the characters. So Spider-Punk. Why did Mikhail O'Hara recruit someone so volatile? He sabotaged multiple parts of the complex, he helped Miles escape by teaching him how to use his powers, and he even made a new watch for Gwen, making her banishment not permanent. Next, Miles being the only one to actually thrive and save his dad. I guess Gwen didn't go back to her universe and try to talk to her dad, and explain that if he gets a promotion that he will, well, die. Same goes for the other spider people that are in similar situations. Also, if he doesn't get a promotion, does that mean that the universe explodes? It's like Miles is the only one who is actually trying to save people and that basically ruins other characters a little bit. The next character I want to talk about is Fat Pete, trying to basically give Morales the chill pill and he tries to basically convince Miles that even if his father dies, he can basically have someone in the future which is a little bit cringe because it predicates on the predestined nonsense. Also, I have to point out that bringing a kid into another universe is basically insane and very irresponsible. The same goes for the pregnant lady. With great power comes great responsibility and these two don't show it at all. On the other side, I really enjoyed the spot. He tied very well from the first movie and goes from a goofy villain to a genuinely menacing villain by the end of it. I liked Miles Morales' family drama, and him keeping secrets basically ruining his personal life, which is a staple in the Peter Parker character. I like the summary of what happened to Gwen before the last movie. But yeah, I really hope the next movie they subvert the canon event, because if they don't, this movie and the sequel have the potential of ruining a lot of Spider-Man characters in this movie. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, goodbye.